Patient Safety and Quality Improvement Act, Wikipedia Article Audio The Patient Safety and Quality Improvement Act of 2005, PUBL 10941, 42 U.S.C. CH 6A Subch 7 Part C, Established a System of Patient Safety Organizations and a National Patient Safety Database to encourage reporting and broad discussion of adverse events, near misses, and dangerous conditions, it also established privilege and confidentiality protections for patient safety work product. The SCIA was introduced by Sen. Jim Jeffords. It passed in the Senate July 21, 2005 by unanimous consent and passed the House of Representatives on July 27, 2005 with 428 ayes, 3 nays, and 2 present slash not voting. Context for the Passage of the Act Summary of the Act's Major Sections Definitions Privilege and Confidentiality Protections Network of Patient Safety Databases Patient Safety Organization Certification and Listing Lexology, in cooperation with the Association of Corporate Counsel, predicts that this law will be one of the top 10 healthcare law issues in 2010. The Notice of Proposed Rulemaking for this law describes the reason Congress passed it. Much of the impetus for this legislation can be traced to the publication of the landmark report, To Air is Human, by the Institute of Medicine in 1999. The report cited studies that found that at least 44,000 people and potentially as many as 98,000 people die in U.S. hospitals each year as a result of preventable medical errors. Based on these studies and others, the report estimated that the total national costs of preventable adverse events, including lost income, lost household productivity, permanent and temporary disability, and health care costs to be between $17 billion and $29 billion, of which health care costs represent one half. One of the main conclusions was that the majority of medical errors do not result from individual recklessness or the actions of a particular group, rather, most errors are caused by faulty systems, processes and conditions that lead people to make mistakes or fail to prevent adverse events. Thus, the report recommended mistakes can best be prevented by designing the health care system at all levels to improve safety making it harder to do something wrong and easier to do something right. As compared to other high-risk industries, the health care system is behind in its attention to ensuring basic safety. The reasons for this lag are complex and varied. Providers are often reluctant to participate in quality review activities for fear of liability, professional sanctions, or injury to their reputations. Traditional state-based legal protections for such health care quality improvement activities, collectively known as peer review protections, are limited in scope, they do not exist in all states. Typically they only apply to peer review in hospitals and do not cover other health care settings, and seldom enable health care systems to pool data or share experience between facilities. If peer review protected information is transmitted outside an individual hospital, the peer review privilege for that information is generally considered to be waived. This limits the potential for aggregation of a sufficient number of patient safety events to permit the identification of patterns that could suggest the underlying causes of risks and hazards that then can be used to improve patient safety. Patient safety organization must certify that it lists the requirements in the SCIA and be listed on the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality website. The definition of patient safety work product is quite broad. 
Patient safety work product includes any data, reports, records, memoranda, analyses, or written or oral statements, which could improve patient safety, health care quality, or health care outcomes, that are assembled or developed by a provider for reporting to a PSO and are reported to a PSO. It also includes information that is documented as within a patient safety evaluation system that will be sent to a PSO and information developed by a PSO for the conduct of patient safety activities. However, patient safety work product does not include a patient's medical record, billing, and discharge information, or any other original patient or provider information nor does it include information that is collected, maintained, or developed separately, or exists separately, from a patient safety evaluation system. Patient safety work product must not be disclosed, except in very specific circumstances and subject to very specific restrictions. Note. The patient safety activities exception is the most common one that providers and PSOs will be working with. Permitted Disclosures Violations and Enforcement The Act is enforced by the Secretary of Health and Human Services. Listed PSO Logo Only officially listed PSOs may display this logo. Patient Safety Activities PSWP may be disclosed, between the provider and the PSO i.e., from the provider to the PSO, for patient safety activities, and, from the PSO to the disclosing provider, for patient safety activities. An individual who knowingly or recklessly violates the confidentiality provisions is subject to a civil penalty of up to $10,000 for each act constituting such violation, safe harbor a provider whose workforce member discloses PSWP is not deemed to have violated the act if that workforce member disclosure does not include written or oral statements that assess the quality of care of an identifiable provider or, describe or pertain to one or more actions or failures to act by an identifiable provider. PSWP may be disclosed to to investigate or determine compliance with the Patient Safety Act or with HIPAA.